the Porter. It is the East versus the Big Ten today. The winner going out to the Final Four next weekend in Indianapolis. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Don Cricky, joined by former Iowa State All-American Gary Thompson. Gary, as you know, Lou Olson, the coach of Iowa, said a lot of the ranked ball clubs have gone home. It's the teams that are still here, and that's why I was here. They're playing as a team. Well, they certainly are. They have five people that are in double figures. They played very well. Ronnie Lester is injured. He's only about at 75%. And because of that, they even have to be more as a team. Well, Georgetown's a Cinderella team also. They're under coach John Thompson, the big guy, 6'10", 300 pounds. Big John says we're motivated as much by the fact people say we don't belong here as we are by the chance at winning a national championship. Georgetown's proved they belong. They certainly do, and they proved it. They beat Syracuse twice, who's ranked number one in this regional. They beat Maryland twice, Iona twice, and St. John's. They got a great player in Craig Shelton, the leading scorer and rebounder. They'll play 10 people as a team, and they'll come at you strong. And we're going to be back to meet the starting lineups after this message. Ladies and gentlemen, here are the starting, starting lineups for today's East Regional Championship game. Starting for the Iowa Hawkeyes. At forward, a 6'6 sophomore from Chicago, Illinois, number 40, Kevin Boyle. For the Georgetown Hoyas, at forward, a 6'7 senior from Washington, D.C., number 33, Craig Shelton. A 6'5 junior from Cleveland, number 32, Vince Brookins. For Georgetown, a 6'7 senior from Washington, number 25, Al Dutch. Starting at center for Iowa, a 6'10 junior from Chicago, number 54, Steve Craftsison. The Georgetown Center at 6'7", a sophomore from Washington, number 40, Mike Hancock. The starting guards for Iowa, a 6'2", senior from Chicago, number 12, Ronnie Lester. For Georgetown, a 6'0", sophomore from Gastonia, North Carolina, number 21, Eric for Iowa, a 6'2 sophomore from Chicago, number 30, Kenny Arnold. And for the Hoyas, at 6'3, a senior from Washington, number 44, John Doran. The officials. There is Lute Olson, ready to lead his Hawkeyes. a great year. 22 and 8 out of Hawkeyes in the Big Ten. So we're almost set to go. The Eastern Regional Championship game ready to go here at the Spectrum in Philadelphia. And now we return to our studios for this message. Don Cricky with Gary Thompson back at the Spectrum in Philadelphia. These three men with a big job today. Keep order in this game. It's going to be rough. These teams play hard. They crash backboards. Robert Rhodes, Booker Turner, Dale Kelly. They'll be running the ball game. The Georgetown Hoyas, if buddy asked, what is a Hoya? Well, a Hoya is a Greek derivative of the word what a. They used to call the Georgetown football team the Stonewallers. Somebody put Greek to that and called them Hoya Saxa. What rocks? And the Hoyas are stuck. They've got some rocks on the front line for Georgetown, too. They're, they're not real big club, but they're strong and physical and extremely quick. Matchup could be decided, Gary, in the backcourt. Duran of Georgetown against the great Ronnie Lester of Iowa. The two control guards who run the offenses. Crafts and ready to go up now. Hancock against them. Ball tipped in backcourt, and they'll throw it up again. Georgetown comes into the game, as no doubt you're aware, with the longest win streak in Division I of NCAA play. 15 consecutive games. Why is coming to this game after another victory over Maryland? Georgetown with the ball. Dutch goes down low. Moving out of the corner is John Duran. Powerful backcourt player. Rebound tipped around. Put back up in the air. Hancock knocks it down. Hoy is on the board and he leads the game 2-0. Georgetown pressuring the ball. John Duran, a senior backcourt player, is called.
called for a foul against Maryland the other night. Georgetown forced 27 turnovers. Here's the press as they jump right into it. Iowa had a little problem against Syracuse, and I think Georgetown has keyed off that. John Durham picks up the foul. Also, they're probably trying to take advantage of the fact that Lester, who's been out, has got the bad knee, is only about 75%. But the Hawkeyes break the press. They go to Brookins. He comes down low. Vince Brookins off last ties the game at two for the Hawkeyes. Down court quickly into the corner. They go back to Hancock. Goes Georgetown into the middle of Shelton. He goes to the boards any chance he gets. A crasher puts his head down and heads into that painted area right to the bowl. Here's another call. Whistle stops play. 19-14 to go. Less than a minute gone in the first half. The winner of this game will, of course, advance to play the winner of the second game today, LSU and Louisville. They'll be meeting at Houston for the Midwest Regional Championship. There's John Thompson going back to the bench. He came to Georgetown the previous season. They'd won three games and lost 23. Eric Floyd, a sophomore, has led Georgetown in scoring the past two seasons. He's the first player in Georgetown history as a sophomore to go over 1,000 points. He probably will be the all-time scorer for Georgetown next season. Ball's going to come back inbounds now. Lute Olsen up and shouting. This team, you may remember, shared the Big Ten Championship last year with eventual champion Michigan State, Purdue. Georgetown getting right after it. They go out in front now, 5-2. to two. Pulling up for the jump shot is Kenny Arnold of Iowa. Arnold hitting from about 17 feet out just outside the free throw line. Makes it a 5-4 game, Georgetown. Quick pace to this game. It should keep up that way. They both like to run. Floyd gets position down low. Eric Floyd gets two more for Georgetown. And Floyd likes to go to those offensive boards. He's a big leaper. Did not even high jump in high school until they called him out the first time he won the county championship there, 6-6. That's how Iowa's season went. You get the idea how important Ronnie Lester's been to their backcourt player. Without him, they played 15 games, won eight and lost seven. With him, they played 15 games. They've won 14 and lost one. Lester has the ball. His jersey, number 12, will be retired at season's end. He's Iowa's all-time leading scorer, senior from Chicago, Dunbar High School. Georgetown play an impressive man-for-man -man defense. Iowa in a passing game. They've been looking to go more inside since Lester, Ronnie Lester, got hurt. Brookins jump shot doesn't go. And here come the Hoyas down the floor. Al Dutch takes it right down the middle, pulls up. He is rejected by Brookins. And Iowa, strong physically from the Big Ten, comes right down the floor. Kevin Boyle inside court. Four of the five starters are from Chicago, four of Iowa. Ten of Georgetown players are from Washington, D.C. And that's Boyle's spot, right to the baseline. He's a great shooter from there. The only player on this team, he made all Big Ten second team. Not a first team player right now in the Iowa club. Evan Boyle defending against Craig Shelton in Iowa forces an Aaron shot. Here come the Hawkeyes on the run. Kenny Arnold looks on the left side, pulls up. Arnold shooting a little bit out of range and Dutch switch down defensive rebound for Georgetown. Not a good shot that time because there's no board strength. There's about one on three. I think Lute Olsen would rather at that point set it up and get into the pattern. Coming out of the corner is Al Dutch. Going hard to the basket. Thanks it in our flat. It goes. It is nine to six Georgetown. Brookins has been learning on defense. That's one of the reasons why he hasn't played as much. You see, he got beat there. He got brought up on his man with a little fake. Dutch went around him and scored. One thing's for sure, Gary, nobody's sitting on the ball. That's for sure. They're coming down and getting something away in about 10 seconds when they bring it inbound. Now they come right back the other way, shooting and hitting. I think Georgetown lead down to a point. That was the strength, I think, of the Iowa offense if they don't get it off the break. Let's get in the passing game, get the wide open 15-footer, which Kenny Arnold did. Kenny Arnold with the second field goal. Brookins now coming up with the ball for Iowa. Lead pass in the corner to Kraft Sis in the center. Way cross court to Arnold. Back out to Lester. No foul. Lester to Boyle off the baseline. Not enough there. Rebound tapped out. There's a foul call. Come on, Boyle. Came over the top going for the loose ball. Well, Boyle knew he picked up the foul, and he was mad at himself. Watch right here. He goes for the shot. Dutch comes there. It'll come off the rim. Watch Boyle. Dutch screened him. Good check off by Dutch, and Boyle goes right over the top, picks up the foul, an unnecessary one for Boyle, and I was not that deep. They've been playing about seven kids. It has not been a year for the front runners to dominate an NCAA play. 
Most of the big teams are long gone. It's teams like Iowa, fourth in the Big Ten this year, and Georgetown seated no better than third in the Eastern Regional, despite beating Syracuse twice and Maryland once in the regular season. We're playing for the right to go to Indianapolis. Here's Shelton slamming it down, getting the inside pass. Players lead by three. Well, their leading score, Shelton, 17.4, but what made that play was a great feed to the baseline side away from the defensive man. Vince Brookins came down, started to move to the basket, and was called for a travel, and so the ball is back over to Georgetown. That's another problem that Brookins has had. They've tried to get him under control. Look at Georgetown coach Joe, John Thompson, now Lou Olson, but he's had the problem of steps, traveling on that first step on his offensive move. Brookins averaged only seven and a half points a game during the regular season, but he threw in 17 in an upset of North Carolina State. Throw in 21 in the victory over Syracuse. Well, he's 13 for 20 in three NCAA games, so he's been a key factor for the Hawks. Heading hard to the basket. Eric Smith, now the ball comes up court. Georgetown's Ronnie Lester, a great ball handler. Very quick to move inside. Eric Floyd is against him. Brookings on the flank. Georgetown swinging that zone all over. 2-3 primarily, and here's the knockdown jump shot. There's the value of Lester right there. He's not quick. You can see that he can't do it himself like he used to be able to do, but he'll penetrate. This is off to Brookings. Brookings gets the second field goal right back at the other end. Hancock gets his second for the Hoyas, and Georgetown again by 3-13-10. Georgetown with a 26-5 record coming into the game. What's this? No call right here. It looked like it either should have been a charge or a blocking foul. Brookings and Tycourt tries to go low to Kraft Systems. We're going to have a foul on Georgetown. That's, uh, we've got Steve Wade in there now. He's come off the bench. He's a kid right there at Iowa City, the home of the Hawks, West High School. We have a break in the action. 15.01 left to play in the first half. Georgetown 13, Iowa 10. Everybody. After the Eastern Regional Final is decided here in Philadelphia, we go to Houston where LSU and Louisville, two top five teams, go head to head. For a ticket from the Midwest Regional of the Final Four and a shot at the national title when the NCAA Regional Finals continue. And Don, that means we're going to be left with only one team ranked in the top 10 that will go into the final four, LSU and Louisville. Georgetown, you got to give them their due. And at one poll, they were in the, they were the 10th and once in 11th, I think. And as you know, Gary will be picking a player to receive the most valuable player of the game scholarship award. That won't be decided for some time because you get the feeling this thing might be decided at the final shot. I think we're right down to the wire. As a lot of teams will do right now, Georgetown goes into zone on the ball out of bounds. Kenny Arnold takes a look outside. Georgetown swinging into his own 2 1 2. Now Hancock in the middle. Kraft Sisson out of the game, and Steve Waite is in. Another big guy at 6 10. Brookins taking command. Boy, he's feeling. You can tell, as I mentioned, 13 for 20 coming into this ball game. He is looking for the shot every time. You get the good rhythm, he almost can feel every shot's going down. It's 13 12 Georgetown. Hoyas and White. Outside they go to Hancock. John Durham, their quarterback. Lester against him, the Iowa All American. You notice the pressure there by Lester. Not there like he would normally play. Got to back off because of that bad knee. Eric Floyd, Georgetown leading scorer in his favorite spot just off the right baseline. Gets the jump shot. Hoyas by three again, 15 12. There's one thing I was doing to avoid that pressure, take it off the guards. They're bringing Boyle down to go forward. He's a good ball handler, has played some guard for Iowa in the past. Wade comes outside, big 6'10 from Iowa City. Kevin Boyle, another Chicago player, hits the jump shot for Iowa. We're back to within a point now to Hawkeye. And Iowa's offense doing a good job getting the 15 foot shot right there for Boyle, much as they did earlier for Harvard. Eric Lloyd starts to move on Kenny Arnold. A whistle blows in the middle, and Shelton might have been pushing off. Call's going to go against Georgetown. I'll tell you what's happening right there is that Iowa on the cutters coming through, where Shelton wanted to get down low and post up. They're doing what we call body checking, keeping that man going from where he wants to go. Shelton, a little frustrated, gave the shove, picked up the foul. Oh, big John Thompson there. Big John says he runs a dictatorship. He's the coach you have to. He tries to make it a benevolent dictatorship. One boss, though. Well, when I look at John Thompson, uh, he's going to be boss. I'd yeah. have respect for him. 
Ronnie Lester tries to dance inside. Floyd doing a good job keeping him from penetrating so far. Primarily the zone is doing that. There's not much room to move inside. Vince Brookins, he's been the game plan early as he's been firing it up, and he's going to go to the free throw line. Vince Brookins, a 6'5 junior from Cleveland, Ohio, one of 12 children. And Georgetown right now is sticking with the zone, and they're sticking with it because they got the seven-footer, Mike Frazier, 260 pounds in there. He's not that mobile. I'm sure that if they were man for man, I would attack him right away with either Wade or Craftson when he's in the ball game. They might list him at 260. If that's not 290, there isn't any. Brookins at the free throw line, drives it down, ties the game at 15. Vince Brookins, sharpshooter from the outside. The Brookins starting to produce the points for Iowa, and the Hawkeyes go in front 16 to 15. And a big cheering assembly in from Iowa City, back in the Hawkeyes. Well, they've got approximately uh, 1,500 fans, and a lot of them drove all night on Thursday to get here, drove through 500 miles in a snowstorm. They are wild fans, Hawkeye fans, Don. I'll tell you, they are here, and they will make some noise. Eric Floyd with his third field goal puts Georgetown back in front of 17 to 16. Kevin Boyle goes down low to Brookings. Matched against him is Craig Shelton. He can get in foul trouble. Shelton, a very aggressive player, had a problem against Maryland. Had a sit down with four in the first half. Kevin Boyle loses the defense with a fake. Let's see what they have. Three second call. Back into the game now is Hancock for Georgetown. Shelton goes out. Mike Shell now, Mike Hancock in. I think Flute Olsen has really made a smart coach in Dover in early going with that pressure by bringing Kevin Boyle to bring it up, taking all the pressure off the guard. Oh, good. Eric Floyd's filling it up. That was a rainbow. Georgetown again by three after the Hoyas lost their lead by a point, losing trailing 16 15, and now go back out in front with consecutive field goals 19 to 16. Ronnie Lester. Had a knee repaired, his right knee, about February 1. Minor surgery, did it with an arthroscope. But he was out. Now he's back at about 80%. Doesn't have all the quickness back. Brookins, he knows where to go, right at the hoop. Uh, he is really playing in this first half. And I said, aggressive, he is looking for the shot. And it looks like Lute Olsen has given him the green light. Georgetown by one. Al Dutch on the outside. Hancock is moving down low, and that great big guy, Frazier, is looping back and forth across the lane. He makes weight look small, and weight's a 6'10". 11.30 to play in the first half. Good play by Georgetown. Al Dutch looks it down low, and big Mike Frazier at seven feet. Takes the high pass, goes back up. Georgetown by three. And that's Frazier's range right there. He's hitting 66%, but he's not going to take anything much more than six feet away from the basket. Kevin Boyle with a nice offensive board at 6'5", and he draws the shooting foul. Kevin Boyle is probably the most underrated player, probably in the Big Ten Conference. Uh, he just does a super job. He's the kind of kid that goes along. You don't notice his play. He's not flashy, but when it's all done, he's done a good defensive job, good board work, and he's going to get double figures. Apparently they rule the push came before Boyle went up to shoot, so it'll be an inbound to Iowa. Lester ready to put the ball in play. Loops it back out to Brookins. He's liable to gun from there. Georgetown zone protecting, cordoning off that middle. They're blockading the lane. Into weight, back out to Brookins. We talk about hot. Brookins is killing him right now. He brings Iowa back to within one. Well, Brookins shot it in, but credit that play to Wade. As soon as he got the ball in the middle of the zone, right back out to the wing to Brookins, he's wide open, and he gets the easy 15 footer. Frazier coming down with the ball, puts it back up, and big Mike Frazier coming in to spell Shelton, backs in a shot and goes to the free throw line. We're we'll talking about Frazier being a six-foot shooter, but watch him. He comes off the board real tough, turns around, left hands it, gets moved out. You see his body move right out that time by Wade. Up off the glass, he'll be at the line for the three-point play as we come back live. There's a big man, too. John Thompson, who's the best player he's ever seen? Bill Russell, and he ought to know. He played behind him with the Boston Celtics when Russell is his heyday. Big John Thompson's had some winning years as a high school player at John Carroll in Washington. His team once went 55 and 0. Played on a championship team at Providence. 
NIT championship backed up Russell on two Celtic NBA championship teams. Came back and won a city tournament at St. Anthony's out in Washington. Then went to Georgetown. Brookings now at 14 points. He has been Iowa's game in this first half. 24-22. Hoyo still in the lead, but Brookings with 14 of Iowa's 22 points. John, I was almost going to say that that one might be just a little out of his range. He should have turned it down, but when you're hot, keep going. Iowa's smart right now. They're going to the man with the hot hand. Halfway through the first half now. Don Quickie with Gary Thompson. This is the Eastern Regional Final on NBC. NCAA college basketball playoff. Gary Fenlon in the game. Loops it over to Eric Smith. Georgetown getting perimeter passing outside. Iowa almost looking like they're in a zone, but it's a real sagging man for man. They're looking to cut off that inside play. They're dropping off. Eric Floyd goes down to the baseline. And Ronnie Lester gets tight on him there because Floyd has been hitting the baseline jumpers. Here's Eric Smith. Another good shooter. Loops it back outside to Floyd. And Georgetown steps it down. These Hawkeye fans, they think the whole building with Hawkeye fans. They make noise. Well, they certainly do. And there's a traveling call. That'll get some more noise. And look at the Hawk fans right here. They're coming mass to root this team home. They've had their problems. They've had a lot of injuries. And it's good. Right now, there's a timeout on the floor. Iowa will inbound the ball when we come back with a chance to tie Georgetown for the lead with 9.24 to play in the first half. If you think all steel belted... Back at the Spectrum in Philadelphia, this is Don Quickie with Gary Thompson. This is the championship game of the NCAA Eastern Regional. The Iowa Hawkeyes trailing Georgetown 24 to 22 with 9.24 left to play in the first half. There's a Hoya fan, Earl Bailey. <laughs> Girl looks ready. Won't you come home, Bill Bailey? There's nobody wanting to go home in this game. Everybody wants to be headed for Indianapolis, and either one of these clubs that makes it is going to be a great representative. Both clubs are playing real fine basketball. The fast pace may be in favor of Georgetown. They're a little deeper. They'll play 10 kids. Iowa will go with about seven, maybe to eight. 9.24 to go in the first half. Georgetown has led most of the way. Very briefly, Iowa went in front 16 to 15. Hoyas came back with two quick field goals. Took back a three-point lead. Now their lead is cut to two. And if Iowa hits here, it'll be tied up. But Rasmussen can't get it off the side. And Dern leads the break for Georgetown. Goes inside court to Eric Smith. Almost lost the ball. And good now as Ronnie Lester's right on him. He can steal the ball. Lester. These are two teams that weren't expected to be here, but they're contending for a spot in the final four. Georgetown and Iowa. As Lute Olson said, the Iowa coach, it's the teams who are still playing now. Some of the ranked ball clubs went home. You win as a team, and that's why we're still here. There's Shelton. He finally got the ball on foil. He's been playing without it right where he wanted to. Crafton comes in right there, catches the foul, and Shelton's going to go up for a two shots. Boyle been doing an excellent job of keeping Shelton from getting the ball. He finally got it. You can see what happens. He's going to be tough inside. Big John Thompson goes to that towel pretty regularly. He goes through about a gallon of milk a day. Somebody asked him if he had an ulcer. He says, no, I drink it because I don't want to get one. They first indicated he's going to get, excuse me, uh, Don, that they were going to get the shot. Foul evidently committed earlier. They took it out on the side. Craig Shelton leans into the glass a little too much. John gets his own ball. And Shelton goes back up with his own bound and sticks it down, and Georgetown leads by four, 26-22. Well, that may be his real strength, is going back to the glass. He hits that offensive board probably as well as any player in the country. He now has four. High score in the game is Vince Brookins of Iowa has scored 14 first-half points. Driving to the basket is Lester. Offensive board is tipped up. Perhaps this and can't get it down, and it'll come back inbound to the Hoyas. Eric Smith will work in the back line with John Duran. Lute Olson, he had a great year at Long Beach State. 23 victory season against two defeats, came to Iowa. Has had consecutive NCAA teams there now. And three 20-game seasons out of six years there at Iowa. Done a tremendous job turning that program back around and bringing it to the top. Harry Fenland moves on. And Bob Hansen, a freshman backcourt player for Iowa, has come in. Ball is tipped out of bounds. Last touch by a Hawkeye. 
The term student athlete epitomizes participation in intercollegiate athletics while pursuing a college education each year. 80 NCAA postgraduate scholarships with $2,000 each are awarded to student athletes who've maintained at least a B average during their years in college. Preceding announcement furnished by the NCAA. And back towards they go, and Fenlon sets it up. His sister, Mary, oversees the academic side of Georgetown basketball. Every player has to report to Mary once a week, tell, them, tell Mary how they're doing. And if they're not doing well, she sits him down with a tutor. Right Naps now, out study time for him. That's right. Right now, Don, the Hoyas have three reserves in there, Durham, Fenlon, and Springs. And this is where they can maybe get to Iowa within that depth. Lead out of Hanson, threw it too hard, and Eric Smith of Georgetown outruns the Iowa Hawkeyes to the ball. Well, the freshman Bob Hanson making the mistake, a bad pass, a little too strong for Lester to handle, but he's playing with a broken hand, broken bone in his hand for a freshman. He substituted for Lester, and he is hurt. He's really played well. Penland moves to the basket. Greg Shelton now heads in there. That's his game, fresh and glass. Shelton takes it inside. Georgetown opens up its biggest advantage of the basketball game, a six-point lead. Well, Shelton, the most valuable player in the Big East tournament, he had 18 points in that final game against Syracuse. An honorable mention, All-American player. Now Iowa comes down. Bob Hansen, a 6'5 freshman from Des Moines. Gets a much-needed field goal to bring the Hawkeyes back to within four. Brookings has been quiet for a while. Vince Brookings with 14 points. John Duran, not a great shooter, but they get the shot. He knocks it down for Georgetown. Hoyas again by six. Well, that's nothing unusual. John Duran, a second all-time scorer. He's got 1,577 points coming into this ball game. He can do it. Great driving backcourt player. Here's Brookins. He's that line drive jumper. Whistle stops play inside, and the call goes against Craig Shelton of Georgetown. I'm not sure, but that might not have been the first miss for Brookins, and that really was a little bit out of his range. Shelton now has two personal fouls. 5.55 to play in the first half. Next weekend promises to be one of the most exciting presentations of the collegiate basketball season ever. On Saturday, starting at 1 p.m. Eastern time, the Final Four battled out for the right to fight for the national championship. And on Sunday on NBC Sports World, it's the AIAW National Women's Collegiate Basketball Championship live at 4 p.m. Monday night at 9, March 24, the NCAA championship game at 9 Eastern time. Luke Pass goes down low to Ed Spriggs. John Duran outside. Here's Eric Floyd. Iowa zone. That's an Iowa man to man. Shelton again gets inside. Greg Shelton hits that close shot. Boyle did everything he could do, but once Shelton gets the ball, he is tough. Boyle let him have the shot, got his hands up, backed off, and, Sh and Shelton just knocked it home. Now the Hoya fans are heard from as Georgetown gradually extends its lead to eight. Brookings is rejected by Ed Spriggs, number 50. The mailman, his teammates call him, Big Ed Spriggs. After high school, he went to work for the U.S. Postal Service. We'll watch Ed Spriggs reject. That's right. It's the kind of play that can really turn a crowd on, a dunker, a block like this. Watch him go up on Brookings, has had the hot hand, slams it out of bounds. The Hawks will play it in. John Thompson says Ed Spriggs was a mailman. He came to Georgetown with a special delivery package. We sent the package back, but kept in. <laughs> it was a good package to keep. The mailman, he's in the middle of the zone. 5-10 to go first half. 32-24, Hawkeyes need a hoop now. Here's the whistle, stops play inside. They're gonna get Spriggs for pushing off. Well, I think this zone right now has helped Georgetown. Iowa in their uh, passing game offense was coming up with some good shots. 15-foot shots wide open when they closed the gap and took that lead. Good look at George Thompson. He, that's the man that made the move. The zone right now has stymied Iowa a little bit. They've also committed some turnovers. Big John Thompson. He wants this so bad. His players seem to be pretty loose, though, warming up. And I'll tell you one thing, they were up for this one. Hoyles came out shouting. Well, they're ready to wait on the free throw line. 62% free throw shooter. A Big Ten all-academic team for two straight years. So I was showing a little press. Excuse me, Don, right now. Trap. They've been giving Georgetown its offense. Georgetown's been coming down unimpeded, setting up its offense. Georgetown had some success early pressuring Iowa. Loop pass. Spriggs goes to the moon to get it. He's rejected by Kraftsisson. 